Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Weather prevents the Solar Impulse 2 from leaving Japan for Hawaii. Drone hits airplane video goes viral, but what really happened? NASA is planning another flight to the moon, but it's not our moon. I'm Brie Cross, it is June 25th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The all-electric Solar Impulse 2 is an amazing demonstration of technology, but the fragile all-electric aircraft also has its limitations. After weeks on the ground in Nagoya, Japan, Solar Impulse 2 had been set for departure on its 4,000-mile crossing to Hawaii on Tuesday, but it was not to be. It is reported that the flight was scrubbed because of unfavorable weather conditions along the route of the flight and no date has been set for another attempt. The first attempt to cross from China to Hawaii was cut short when the weather deteriorated over the Pacific Ocean and the plane made an unscheduled stop in Nagoya, Japan. When the flight does occur, it will be the world's longest solar-powered flight as well as the longest solo flight in history. The crossing is expected to take five days when the weather allows. You can believe everything you see on YouTube, right? Of course, we know that's far from the truth and in some cases, trumped up postings can really cause a stir. You may have seen a video of a quadcopter appearing to hit the winglet of a Southwest 737 and taking off the top couple feet of the winglet. Well, the reason it wasn't reported here or anywhere else is because the video was faked. Not to say that it wasn't a good fake. If you watched in real time, you could believe that a quadcopter hit the winglet and took out a chunk of the airplane. There is even very convincing audio of a crying baby in the airplane's cabin. It's reported that a special effects designer named Bruce Brandt posted the fake video. He later tweeted, making something go viral is like fishing, gotta put something good on the hook, but still no guarantee you're going to catch anything. I guess he figures any publicity is good publicity, even if it scares a lot of people and gives an industry a black eye. After the break, NASA is planning a flight to one of Jupiter's moons. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Beyond Earth, Jupiter's moon Europa, is considered one of the most promising places in the solar system to search for signs of life as we know it, and a new NASA mission to explore this potential is moving forward from concept review to development. NASA's mission concept is to conduct a detailed survey of Europa and investigate its habitability. The project has successfully completed its first major review by the agency and is now entering the development phase known as formulation. The mission plan calls for a spacecraft to be launched to Jupiter in the 2020s, arriving in the distant planet's orbit after a journey of several years. The spacecraft would orbit the giant planet about every two weeks, providing many opportunities for close flybys of Europa. The mission plan includes 45 flybys to image the Moon's icy surface at high resolution. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, has been assigned the responsibility of managing the project. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative 
behind Airborne Unlimited. This week, we're proud to say that Women in Aviation International is part of our Airborne Partnership Initiative. Known to all of us as the WAI, this organization is unique in its mission and knows how to get the job done. The unique thing about WAI is that it represents women in every imaginable facet of aviation and aerospace. It was started in 1990 and was formally established in 1994 to encourage women to seek opportunities in aviation. Only a small percent of the aviation-related jobs in the U.S. are filled by women, and the WAI is working to help women make the impact in aviation that they are capable of. The WAI impact on aviation was in plain view at their last annual convention, which broke attendance records and was represented by just about every aviation and aerospace endeavor. It's an organization that sponsors success for women, and aviation and aerospace is the vehicle. After these messages, an SAIB has been issued for certain Piper PA-46 aircraft. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI-340 Quattro tso airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has issued a special airworthiness information bulletin for certain Piper aircraft model PA-46 airplanes. The discovery of fatigue cracking in the wing main spar lower cap near wing station 79 on one airplane is what led to the issuance. Hartzell Propeller has translated key propeller owner manuals into Mandarin. The propeller manuals cover a number of aircraft approved for flight in China by the Civil Aviation Administration of China. That must have been quite a project, but we're still holding out for the Klingon translation. The National Air Transportation Association announced the selection of Andy Priester of Priester Aviation in Wheeling, Illinois as chair of the NATA Board of Directors. The association also named Marty Hiller of the Marathon Jet Center in Marathon, Florida as vice chair. Cool City Avionics congratulates Contact Aviation in Waterford, Michigan on the successful completion of their first Cool City Avionics HAP 100 autopilot installation. The installation was completed on a Robinson R-44 helicopter. The Boeing Board of Directors has elected Dennis A. Muhlenberg as the company's 10th chief executive. Muhlenberg, who has served as Boeing president and chief operating officer since 2013, becomes president and CEO on July 1st. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The F-35B Lightning II has successfully completed another major milestone as the fifth-generation stealth fighter was launched into the skies from a ski jump last week. This test flight was performed on land but could later be applied to shipboard operations. For more than 30 years, the UK has used the ski jump approach to carrier operations for its Harrier jump jets as an alternative to the catapults and arresting gear. Curved at its leading edge, a ski jump ramp simultaneously launches aircraft upward and forward, allowing aircraft to take off with more weight and less end speed than required for an unassisted horizontal launch. The F-35B's design allows it to automatically position the control surfaces and jet nozzles for takeoff 
a unique capability compared with previous Stavel aircraft. Such automation frees up pilot capability and provides an added safety enhancement. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.